if you're ever feeling down, sowing sugar <laughs> is one of the best things you can do. What do I mean by that? Uh, sowing, sowing, um, and sugar. It's giving or planting love. Whatever you sow, the Bible says, that which you sow, you shall also reap. And I think in that there's wonderful good promises to lift us up to higher places, but it's also an answer to why sometimes we feel like we're kind of in some dry places. It's what we've been sowing to, whatever your efforts um, that we've been putting forth. We reap what we sow. Those, those are scriptures that have just continued to minister to me. I've read them, you know, some of these uh, like in Ephesians, or excuse me, Galatians 6.10, it talks about, um, do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. For that which a man sows, he shall also reap. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. You know, and oftentimes there's sort of a negative cloud context behind that when I think of it. Um, but really when I started dissecting God's word about it, it was something that the, I'm, the first times that I read those scriptures, I thought, ah, that's also the answer to what's going on, right? And the reason I'm sharing that is because a lot of times I'm like, oh, I reap what I sow, that's why I'm getting the, what I feel like is a punishment in life, whether that comes through being dry or just being down. It's like, oh, I'm being punished, okay, because of some bad stuff that I did. This is why I feel so flat. And so there's, that's that negative part that I was telling you, but when you really start knowing the love of God, Really, the corrective part in that is, yes, there's a revelation, if you will, that if you haven't been feeding yourself spiritually, you're going to be, you're going to reap sort of flatness in your spirit. And you just, ah. and so then, therefore, it's like, well, I'm getting what I deserve. <laughs> Isn't that like your tone from like poo? No, woe is me. But... What God wants you to be is like the poo bear in that scenario, going, okay, now start changing where you've been putting your efforts. And sometimes we feel like, well, I got to get clean first. Um, you know, I got to get my mind right. You know, I got to get right before, you know, I, I do. No, it's, this is why the scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That means in your worst moment, in your darkest time, or when you're just flat. Nothing too great. Nothing too bad. How's it going? Good. <laughs> it's in that where you can come boldly to the throne of grace. And what that really means is grace, as I've defined so many times, that it's literally unmerited, unrestrained love. And there's something wonderful about that. It occurred to me the other day, I've made observations about uh, people that have um, certain kinds of pets. Uh, we, we have a cat and three chickens. We had more chickens, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they're fun. I'll find myself out in the backyard, and interestingly enough, I've got this little brown chicken named Sugar. And she'll just come walking up, I'm out there, and I'll find myself with this tone. Hi, Sugar. Hi, sugar. How you doing today, sugar? She does her little chicken noises. And I'm like, I am a full grown man, a little scruffy. And here I am with this little chicken just sort of melts my heart. She just comes up, you know, and occasionally she did it more before, but she would just, if you're sitting down, she'd just fly up and just sit on your shoulder. And what did that, what did that make me feel like? I'll tell you, special. And pets are a very interesting thing. I know people that have um, you know, uh, dogs and rabbits and tigers. Oh boy, no tigers. But what happens with these pets is regardless of what's going on, pets oftentimes, uh, they just have this unrestrained love. doesn't matter what mood you're in. They're just, they just, you know, you come home and they're excited to see you. You leave, they're sad to see you go. And it's just like this over and over and over. That love that's in that pet that ministers to you, this is the kind of love that, that it's just a, just a sliver. I mean, it's, you can't even be put into a fraction of how much God loves you. 
that he's happy to see you come boldly to the throne of grace, this unmerited, unrestrained love that he's willing to pour out on you if you would just come. And it'll clean you up and straighten you right up to know that you're truly loved. Because see, when we don't believe that, that's when we punish ourselves because of what you've been doing and maybe the, the dry as you felt, you know, doing the things that you know you should have been doing or more as adults, we go, I know I should be doing that, I'm just not doing it, you know. Um, my brother Damon, you, I, it's just funny, right? You, you, we've all had busy summers. Summers are busy, right? But I see him today, and I haven't seen him in a, in a, in a minute. But um, he, he said, hey, well, uh, we're the Squires. It's our last name. Good, good to meet you. Like, you haven't been here. I, I, I like that. That's coming boldly to the throne, but that ministers to me. But what I want to share with you is I love you, but God loves you more. And it's just coming and, and getting back. It's just like we have these... Endless, it's like those video games. I've never played them, but I watch people and know people that play these video games that if that character just gets, you know, you know what that means. But all of a sudden, this other, the new character just drops in. It's just like you got these endless, you know, lives. And, and that's a game. But God just wants to, to share with you how much he loves you. Why? Because we, as I've said so many times, are in this dynamic life. I mean... If nothing, if nothing really bad happened or nothing extraordinary happened, life would just be different just by the dynamic of, of aging. Just go on, you just change as a person, not to mention all the other things that you're, and people you're tied to. And so it's us processing all this change and stuff that we get caught in like, oh, what is this thing all about, right? And so it, it, it's, it can be complex, but what I'm trying to share is God's love, that it's, it's so pure that when we do come to him and we know how to do that, that we can be restored and rejuvenated like instantly. And it's all up to us. Open your Bibles um, to the book of Proverbs. I just wanted to continue as the Holy Spirit's led me on a message called Ears, Eyes, Heart. Ears, Eyes, Heart. So as you're turning there or looking, uh, pulling up your smartphone, or just waiting to listen, whatever you choose, um, I shared that uh, a, a week and a half ago, I got invited to go to, uh, to shoot some, some target rifles with, with a couple of friends. And when I got there, um, they were already engaged in you know the sighting in of these things and i we you know we i pulled up you know they're all serious because dudes are serious right and i'm just like i'm pulling up go driving through this field and they're just like on their benches and got the you know ear muffs on all the stuff you know pistols on their waist belts you know and i just get out how's it going you know and of course they reciprocated and but then we back to task and the very first direction that was was uh, given by the the safety instructor there uh he said Eyes, ears, everybody knew what that was. Safety glasses, put on your earmuffs, and because we're going to start cussing, just, just messing, just, you know, loud booms were going to go off. Uh, so we, we understood that, that protection. And what, what I want to share today is a continuance of, of God is saying the same thing to us. He's saying ears, eyes, heart. And it's the gateway to that deliverance and restoration that I just previously talked about. What, what are you listening to? What are you putting your eyes on? Because what you, what you see, the eyes and the ears are gateways to the heart. And the heart is so important. It's so important. What we talk about, Jesus said quite simply, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Right? So we can say things that are out of character every once in a while. Um, but the majority of your character, the, the majority of, of who you are resides in here. So when certain situations come up in life um, and when you get squeezed in that particular area, something will come out of you in that area. So if you don't have enough finances to make a house payment or it's getting close, you know, and you've done it for 20 years and everything's been fine, but whatever the scenario is, all of a sudden you can't do that. Now you're in a whole new area. It wasn't exposed 20 years prior because there was this provision. But now when some emergency comes up, house payment, freezer, plumbing, electrical, 
I have some friends that their house just got struck by lightning. That doesn't happen every day. It hasn't happened to me yet, and in Jesus' name, it won't. <laughs> so my point is, is it's like you're just going along, and then boom, bolt of lightning hits this thing, and you're like, so you have no experience in that area. So out of the abundance of your heart, what's in there, or more importantly, what's not in there, you'll begin to speak about that scenario. And oftentimes when it's a situation like this lightning thing, the first things that happen, you go, what are we going to do? Oh my God, this has caused so much damage and this is going to cost us so much money. And this is, it's a new area. And what God wants to do is as you seek him to make a new deposit and root out the fear and put in the faith. Easy to say, your house isn't on fire because of the lightning bolt, Pastor. But my point is, life is going to continue to give you this, these new things. I guess new is not necessarily an appropriate word because new would be, oh, wow, the new car smell, you know? <laughs> this is a new thing. My house just got struck by lightning. But new is applicable in the fact that it can be an opportunity, right? If we don't, oh, my God. So the, the takeaway from this is learning how to apply God's word. So if you're there in Proverbs 4, you said, Pastor, I've been there for 45 minutes. <laughs> um, verse 20, it says, my son... Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your, somebody, eyes. eyes. Keep them in the midst of your <laughs> heart. It's all good. For the, they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Verse 24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and perverse lips far from you. Five verses. That little pause there is because I was counting them. Five verses. Ears, eyes, heart. Literally starting off inclined. When you, when you start breaking that down, it actually literally means to bend your ear. First, you have to identify the, the first two words, my son, my son. So if you receive this from God, you're like, whoa, I'm a lady. Well, I've shared this so many times before, but when you break that down, it's literally that word son is in the Hebrew children. It's my child. So you have to start with, am I a child of God? Because you don't, in these pressure-filled moments, you don't feel like a loved child, Right? So you have to get yourself in that position first. That's, that's one of the, the biggest areas that you have to acknowledge. You get to acknowledge. <laughs> the, the longer you, 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 you know, you're swimming around in sorrow, uh, the more you're going to see yourself as not worthy of having something. So you have to get in a position, of, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. So what is God saying to me as a child? Bend your ear to my words. It's hard to incline your ear to what he's saying when something just happened that's monumental in your life. It's like, so you know something needs to be done, you just don't know what to do about this something. And this, this process that, that God does is typically always the same. Stop, acknowledge who you are, right? And now when you know who you are, a child of God, what is my father telling me in the midst of all these loud things going on? Then it goes on to say, do not let them depart from your eyes. There are literally times where I, I've, in my Bible, I just color it up. Um, like I have little sticky notes and I mean, I just, I've written things down and when I highlight stuff, it kind of stands out and then I have these little post-it notes that I, that I put in here when I kind of like, well, I know what that word means. And then, you know, I break it down and then, oh, wow, I get more revelation. And I, it's just piled full of this stuff. And when my eyes see myself do that because I've approached God's words as a, spirit, as a spiritual guide, that it's a spiritual thing, and I try to approach it with my heart so I can get revelation. When I write these things down, I, I literally can be in a situation and I can see in my, with my mind's eye where I wrote these and it can feed me in that moment. So there's value when you're inclining your ears to God's word, 
the ear, he's already written this love letter. When you put your eyes on it and you really begin to just, like a really good lollipop, just let it marinate. Just let it marinate. Remember that flavor. And this deposit times, when this happens, we have this opportunity to approach God through prayer, but there's these specific times where you can get one word that'll last you a lifetime. Meaning one time, one, one study can just take you to, to, to a place of change for the rest of your life. You can see it in your mind's eye because you've heard it and you've written it down and you just tasted it and you know it. When a new situation happens, you'll know what to do. So I want to kind of go back to that new situation that I described as I literally I had a friend whose house got struck by lightning a couple months ago. You know, it's just like, well, I don't want to, you know, have somebody put some false lightning in my house so I know what to do next time. You don't, you don't want to, you know, have some arc of electricity go through there so you can train for it. You don't want to train for that, right? Um, but when that does happen, what word can you use in, in that situation? So when these firsts come up, sometimes what, what the, the most powerful thing to do is, is you go on, it says ears, eyes, keep your heart. And then verse 24, you may not know and you may not have a word specifically about this scenario that has never happened before. But verse 24 is super powerful because we can all do this. And it says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. So I want you to think about you know, how you're interpreting that as I read that. Deceitful mouth and perverse lips. Deceitful, pretty easy, right? Um, perverse lips, you know, cussing, cursing might, might float into some of your guys' minds. I, I want to I break a little of that down. Deceitful, literally in the Hebrew, means distortion or crookedness. Perverse in the Hebrew means deviation. So this distortion when something bad happens, when you start speaking things like, and, and this deviation is deviating off of what God would say. When God speaks, things happen. We know we're his child and we can often acknowledge, well, I say things a lot, but it doesn't seem to manifest quickly the things that I'm saying and hoping for like it would with God. Well, we just got to build our faith. So some of the power is don't let unbelief or dis distortion or deviation from what God would say in that situation. So oftentimes the best thing to do is just be silent. Just be silent. I was sharing with a uh, sister in the Lord this morning before service that, you know, sometimes we can go through these, these arid areas in our life, dry, just feeling a little flat. Um, and this summer has been a different summer than, than I've experienced. Why do we expect every summer to be get better and better and better and better. I mean, they're just busier and busier and busier and go by faster and faster. But yet we were like, I want like summer's past, you know, and, and, you know, when things were great, but it's just been a different summer. And, uh, you know, just like all of you, there's things mentally and, and physically and just plans and just different stuff that I've been going through that, that caused me to turn inward and go, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? And enough of them happened in a row back to back to back that I was just like, wow. And this word really helped me. And I would take my little backyard walks and I wish there was lush green grass out there, but we have dandelions because we have chickens and they, you know, so I'm just walking through the dandelions and I just start talking to myself. I'm a child of God. Father, I know that you have the answer for this. What I'm doing is I'm starting to to speak things that, I, that I'm not feeling and that are contrary to what's going on. I'm not allowing me to deviate in my language, meaning this is, I've had enough of this. I mean, ah, blah, and you start having this distorted words and sometimes you know, there's steam that's in there and we let it out in a negative way. And I'm not saying hold it in, just push it way down, way down. And you, you have to let it out, but there's a power in letting breath come out, but not deviating off what God would say. And, and it's, it's relieving. I mean, you just let that, it's just like a, you know, those tea kettles. It's the same thing, but 
but the flesh really wants to let the world have it. Give it a piece of their mind. You're not going to hit it out of the park every time, uh, you know, doing the right thing, saying the right stuff, and being in alignment with God's word. He knows that. That's why there's grace, and by grace you were saved. You didn't do, deserve anything to get saved, our human nature. At least I didn't. You know, and it's his mercy. I didn't deserve it, but it was free. And it's that same, it's like there's such a relief. I remember just like my life was so messed up, but just that relieving feeling as I was on my knees going, God, if you're real, I need you. <laughs> if you're real, and just broke, just began to weep. But when I stood up after giving my life to God, wow, it was amazing. I remember the feeling of coming up out of the water when I got baptized, years after I gave my life to the Lord. I remember that, wow, it wasn't like the heavens parted, but it was just like, just like something different. It's just in that moment that you just feel like, this, there's, I got a new now. And this is what's important about going through life is to remember some of those moments and start speaking uh, on, on those and not the circumstance. Circumstances change. God's word never changes. And he's just sharing with you that as you put your ears and your eyes on it and let it plant in, the, in, in, in your heart that when these situations come up, what you say is very important. This is why a lot of us can kind of acknowledge that there may be people in our life that we really love. And if you've been with them long enough, at some point in your life, you've said, you know, I didn't really mean to say that, you know, in the past, whether that was a minute or a week or whatever. I, I, I really didn't mean to say that. That wasn't me. The other person, maybe when they heard it, I can't believe you said that, you know. Um, or maybe they handled it with grace and they knew in their heart of hearts that what you were saying wasn't you and they just walked away full of grace. <laughs> That's how I am. Not all the time. My point is, is that, that when you love somebody, you know that you sometimes say things that it's out of your normal character and you come back and you, you repent for what you said. And if you've been with them long enough and there is a, this commitment of love, you know, when you get older and wiser and more mature, you, you quit keeping score. Early on in a lot of relationships, you keep score. And you're like, you remember that time? That was just like the last time. I knew I shouldn't apologize to you and this this whole thing. So it's important to get some of God's word inside you to kind of start, because when you acknowledge it, I gotta get that out of me then you have to have something to root that out with. A spiritual thing resides in your heart, so you need a spiritual thing, God's word, to root that out. So this perverse uh, lips and deceitful mouth are literally just saying worldly things. They're in alignment with our feelings oftentimes, and there's power in this scripture saying, put away from you a deceitful mouth, meaning don't speak on this dis distorted stuff. And it says, put perverse lips far from you. Don't deviate. Don't break rank with your words. And this is, you got to have a little place to go take a walk. Blow off this thing. I'll come right back. There's power on that. Hold, no, we don't got time. It's like, if you know something's going to come out, pump the brakes. And that's how you start building uh, you know, you're putting your eyes, your heart, and your, your ears towards the Lord, and from that comes the fruit of self-control. Self-control, you could have it by your own will and power, but there's a difference between that and the fruit of the Spirit of self-control. See, a fruit has to come from a root. This is why when you watch, you know, movies and stuff, sometimes you go, oh, that person's a great actor. But they can only be in that character for the hour or so that you're watching that. Their real person is something else. So you can act any way for a certain length of time, but the real person, out of the abundance of who you are, eventually will show itself. So, believing that God has a word, 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4, I want to share this. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. That's a powerful prayer. It's, it's like, know God. May, there, may the grace and peace be multiplied to you in knowing who God is. The knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3, so powerful. As his divine power has given us, 
has given to us all things that pertain to life. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. This changed literally and continues to change my life. Whatever's going on, lightning strike, new scenarios, things I haven't experienced before, God has something to say about it. His divine nature, there's, there's nothing, you know, that, that he could get surprised about. We're taught the opposite of that, like science, for example. Did you know man just discovered this? And science is this? And everybody's like, whoa, I didn't know that. Science is just catching up to God, what he already did. Right? So when you have that mindset, you know that there's a higher being. Otherwise, you start putting the power in what man can do. And when you do that, you're, you're limited. Oh, well, science says this, so this is contra- God invented it all. Right? We're just catching up to him. And then we get this wow moments. Point it to the Lord. He, he knows. His divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which you have been, given, have been given exceedingly and great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. This is powerful. He's got, he's got divine power. There's a gift attached to this divine power. It's to us for all things that pertain to life. Why? So that when we increase in the knowledge of who he is, that we can be partakers of divine nature. This is why he says you are, the scriptures say that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and a body in that order. Spirit is spiritual. It's divine. So we just need our spirit to be in communication with the spirit of God in the midst of all these situations. And when we have knowledge of what God would do in that situation, now we can tap into the divine power and make a decision that is typically contrary to the decisions most people would make when something bad happens or some circumstance hits you. You start to speak in faith. Faith, as I said so many times, is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. That lightning strike, the substance is the house got struck by lightning and there's great damage, some that you can't even see. But what you're believing for is that there's full restoration, but you're caught in a moment of what do we do? And it's like, just do what's in front of you, right? Turn the power off. Fix the leaking pipes. Do all that kind of stuff. How much is this going to cost? There's processes for all this. Thank you, Lord, that you just guide me by the spirit of wisdom, who to call, when to call, what to do. And it keeps you from like, what do we do? What do we do? And you're not doing anything, but just stuff is just, you know. So listening in those moments are important. But if you don't have something deposited or as you, let me rephrase that. I want to encourage you that you do have something deposited. <laughs> When you invited Jesus Christ into your heart, the whole word exists there. Most of it stays in seed form. So the reality is, is when these situations happen, you can eat off of fruit, but not so much a seed. So this time spent with the Lord, coming to church, your own time, listening to worship music, that just ministers to your heart and sets it, sets it on you know, a certain course. But when, it, when, you're, when you're, your, your eyes and your ears are, are on the word, it goes in and takes the word and all its seed form and begins to water it and it starts to grow. And s- some wonderful things can happen. Just as, you know, you've heard me share before that that sometimes you don't understand the scripture when you're reading it. You're just like, what does that mean? What does that have to do? Because it's so big. But it doesn't mean it should, you know, it should remain a mystery. You just read it and know that it's going to the right place. And sometimes stuff will come out later that you're like, whoa, this is awesome. I mean, I read that like five years ago and I had no idea what it meant. But it stayed there with you. And then somebody shared something about it. And all of a sudden, boom, they come together. and Boom, revelation. And all of a sudden, that seed that you had, you thought it wasn't growing and it just started to grow. No, it began to just root out and all of a sudden it pushed up. I have this little section in in front of my shed uh, in the backyard and I I put a bunch of 
big gravel in there and stuff. But the chickens still get in there and scratch around and stuff. Here's my chickens again, right? Uh, so this year, we've had these chickens for years. This year, something, we've, we've fed them like corn scratch all the time. You just throw it out there. You, any of you chicken orders do that? You, you know, just let that stuff fly. And so um, this year, I, I'm just out there, and I, you know, in the gravel. Ah, they keep scratching the gravel and going down, and then little weeds would grow up. And this stuff just kept growing. So I kept pulling it. All of a sudden, I'm like, ah, let's pull them out in the fall. And, you know, I had these little broadleaf things, and none of those they kind of stopped growing. All of a sudden I started seeing, I just thought it was this weird kind of grass thingy. It's corn. <laughs> corn. I didn't plant corn, but I've been feeding my chickens corn and scratch. And I don't know how or, or what, you know, I mean, crack corn works. It's corn. I mean, I looked it up and I'm like, <laughs> my wife, I'm like, this is corn. So I've just let this stuff grow. I have like, corn growing back there and it just random stuff it's just like wow this is interesting now, i don't know what i'll do with the corn sermons to come but <laughs> but i'm you know I, I took pictures of is this what i think it is how could this happen i'm throwing out cracked corn i mean what does it take to fertilize it well maybe chicken poo i don't i don't know i mean you know this is what happens it's like how's it growing up in this gravel Sometimes you get some very interesting things by reading the word and it comes up later and it's not, it's like, wow. So just keep your eyes and your ears and know that it's going somewhere and something good is going to come from it. Amen. So it, it's, it's so, it's so important to know, yes, I'm a child of God and keep my eyes and my ears on him and then find out, you know, it, one of the most important things is church is wonderful. Um, I, I really, it keeps me accountable. Uh, there are times that my natural man doesn't want to come. You know, today, to be, be quite transparent, it was, it's not that I didn't want to come, but I thought, if I could just sleep in today, <laughs> I, I, it would be good because, see, I'm going to be driving a few hours later this afternoon and get up this morning and preach at church and teach at church about life, and then tonight I have a celebration of life to go to. That's kind of interesting dynamic. In the morning, talking about go team, <laughs> you know, and in the evening... Uh, it, it's sort of the, kind of the same thing, go team. You know, people are going to be heavy hearted, but it's literally about celebrating life because it doesn't end. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. So I was thinking about church. Gosh, it'd be great to sleep in because, you know, it's going to be a long day. Then I thought, I've had some really long days before doing things in the name of fun. And I was like, I'm going to correct that thought. And know that it's not by my power nor by my might, as Zechariah 4 says, but by the Spirit of God. So I was like, Lord, if I did this in my own might and will, I'd want to sleep in. But I'm going to do it because it's a glorious thing to talk about the Lord. It's a glorious thing to be able to just to listen to somebody who, whose heart might be aching or whose heart might be celebrating and everything in between. You have that ability to make that impact on people that are around you your children, your friends, your spouses, the people that you work with, the people that you work out with. What, what are, what, you're, you're constantly saying something, sometimes verbally, but in your action, you're constantly doing that. And the more that you focus on God and keep your eyes and heart on them, you're going to have people that come back to you and go, you know, this one day I was having a bad day and you really helped me. You're like, what did I do? What did I say? What, you know, what, what happened? It was just because you had God in your heart and there might have been just a smile or you just encouraged or you were just motivated. That ministers to people, and there's people out there that need help. And this is why, you know, it's so important just to, just to keep, keep walking this thing out. And sometimes as believers, we get to a down, a down place. I've seen some faces today that I haven't seen in a couple of weeks, and it encourages me. It, makes, it just, like, makes my heart smile. Do I need your smile, and do I need your presence for it? No, because I have a greater vision. But I'm telling you, that's the, that's the fruit of joy and the fruit of love when you actually come and be able to fellowship with people. But I have a bigger vision uh, inside me that God gave me, a bigger assignment that he gave me. And that's what keeps me, keeps me moving, keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me, like, stay the course, have a backyard talk, <laughs> you know, just... So go say hi to sugar or something, but don't be saying these deviated things off of God's word. That's what's important. So this, this word is, uh, and knowing these words are, are so important. Uh, 2 Peter 1 again, just to, to summarize. The word of God that says that, 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 you know, grace and peace 
can come to us multiplied when we know God and we know Jesus. And when we know who God is and, and, and know that he can change things, we know that he operates at this high level of divine power. And through that divine power, there's a gift by his word for anything that pertains to life. And then, then the why is that we might be partakers of this divine nature in the midst of worldly things that are going on. Proverbs 19.21 says this, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this. People are constantly, what's your goal? Here's my goals. January 1, it's a new year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this more and do this and do this. And there's many plans in a man's heart. And often a lot of these plans are to do good. How many of them are to do God? See, this is where, where man plans a lot of things that he's going to do. What we have an ability in that moment is to go, boy, there's a lot of good stuff here I could do. Lord, what would you have me do? Because it says that God's word will stand. And sometimes when we got a lot of good opportunity in front of us, we actually don't want to ask God because it's like, ooh, that would be fun. Or that could be cool. Or that could be, maybe I could have it all. And we don't want to ask God because we're thinking that this God is a God of no. God's not a God of no. God's a God of yes. He's a God of multiply. And whatever he has you do, it's for your profit. Scripture is clear about that. It's for multiply you. It's, it's to, to, to take you to a better place. And often the Father in heaven knows more about what's better for us than what we think would be better for us. Right? If I just won $2 million, yes, I would do some good stuff. But boy, I could pay some things off and I da 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 da. How does that point to God? I don't mean to be a spoiler, right? Like people, oh, I just bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> Whatever. But my, my point is, is when, when we do things on our own effort, if I just had this thing to bail me out, how does that point to God? It's like, praise the Lord, I just won the lottery and I paid everything off. People are like, that, that has nothing to do with God. You won the lottery. That happens all the time. You know, you're, that, so my point is, is God can give you a word in a moment that it looks bleak on the outside, but because you listen to him, because he is who he is, and you're listening by your spirit, and you begin to navigate that, that what the Bible calls that narrow gate. It's a difficult way, but it leads to life. Once you start hearing them in that moment, it's like, wow, this is, this is, this is awesome. This is, wow, all these good plans. But then it gets narrowed down to this, this one. And that's the one that the Lord says, and that's the one that'll stand. It's about longevity. It's about taking the right, you know, the right thing. So many good plans, but there's nothing better than a God plan. Amen. Sometimes we get, maybe none of you, but I've had this happen in Proverbs 19.3. Um, you can get a little, sometimes mad at God, because what you think you want, you prayed about, and you didn't get, and it can cause you to go, how come you didn't do that? And you probably have heard some extreme forms of this through people that may not be believers. They don't want to believe in God because if God is so good, how could he allow this to happen? How could he allow that thing to happen to this person? Because they were a good person. And this is somebody that's just ignorant of not knowing the truth of who God is. And that is he understands that this world is a broken place because of man. But in this broken place, he wants to give you, through divine nature, the ways to beat what's going on here. And so, it's so important. Um, Proverbs 19.3 says, The foolish, foolishness of man twists his way. This is New King James. And his heart frets against the Lord. I like how the Amplified describes this. It says, The, the foolishness of man undermines his way, ruining whatever he undertakes. Then his heart is resentful and rages against the Lord for being a fool. He blames the Lord instead of himself. What does this mean? It means, oh, there's so many good things in front of me. I want to do this. And Lord, if it be your will, just, it must be because this is a good thing. And we just take off and go and do that thing. And then all of a sudden, poof, the bottom falls out. How could you do this, Lord? <laughs> what well, was it a God thing or was it a good thing? Oftentimes it's a good thing that you just ran down. And you didn't have direction because it says the, the, God's counsel will stand. But you took your own, right? And, and then we, oh, and as we go this back and forth with, 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 with God in these ways. 
And the scripture is clear that it's just, it's foolishness to do things without getting the counsel of the Lord. I've been a fool before. A long time ago, yesterday. But this is what happens. But this is, so, this is what keeps me going. It's just like, it doesn't matter how big a fool I am. God is, he's so good. Like he just, he's just like, it's okay. When, when the scripture says that your sins and unrighteousness, he remembers no more, it is so true. We're the ones that keep score against ourselves that keeps us from coming boldly to the throne. It's not, you know, once we get past that part, it's like, you know, this has been so miraculous in my wife and I's marriage. And I, you know, some of you may know that for, you know, 20, almost 20 years I worked for this company and um, five and a half years ago, um, I got let go, more corporate stuff. I, you know, short version, I knew that I, it was gonna happen and I needed, I, I needed to, I was just wasn't happy. I mean, they weren't wrong and I was right and I was wrong and they were right. It wasn't, we just had different views. And, but through the process, it took great faith. What are we going to do? You know, that, that through the gifts and skills that God gave me, it was providing for us in, you know, in a financial way. But it was also those last few years just really grinding me up. Like just fighting for people and just that's wrong and people being done wrong because just corporate stuff that's coming. It was just like, oh, it was like, I, I go to work every day. It's like, Lord, did I miss something? Should I be leaving? It's like, and when I got let go or, you know, position elimination, as they called it, and gave me a severance, when I walked out that door, it was like, whew, this weight got lifted up. And I remember calling my wife and said, honey, and I told her three months before, I said, this is going to happen. God showed me this in a dream. And she's like, well, okay, you know, uh, what does that mean? I, said, I don't know, God told me. Um, three days later, in that dream, I had seen several other people that got let go, and three days later, all those people got let go. The only surprise was that I wasn't one of them. I was like, hmm. Well, when it did happen, I wasn't surprised. When I called my wife on the way home, she said, everything's going to be okay. God's going to provide. And that was one of the most most powerful things that any human being could have shared with me in that moment because you feel as a man like such a failure even though you knew it was coming and I knew it was from the Lord you felt like what am I going to do to provide and it was like you know we're in full-time ministry now um I've joked before but I just recant on that and part of that joke was if you know when you when little boys grow up and if they are looking at making money being a pastor wouldn't be one of the ones that you're like, I'm going to get, I'm a millionaire, <laughs> you know? It is possible, but boy, the world, they don't like rich pastors. They don't mind crooked CEOs <laughs> that are billionaires, but they don't like rich pastors. People don't mind paying for natural food. They have a little problem spending for spiritual food. It's just the way it is. And I've joked about that, but I'm done joking about that. <laughs> Because God is my provider. And after five years, it's nothing short of miraculous that he hasn't provided for us. And my wife, we've had times where it's like, you know, right, right immediately after that happened, it's like, it's going to be good. And then we've had some straight freak out times. <laughs> what are we going to do? House payments due tomorrow. And her husband would be like, it's all right, honey. God's going to provide. She's like, okay, looking out the window. I don't see checks flying <laughs> out. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm looking at the tree in the backyard. It's still immature, barely growing its own green leaves. There is no green dollars on it. What's going to happen? Just trust the Lord. You know, everything is going to be okay. And God would always come through, but it always seemed like it was in this, this, this last minute. And I just looked up a journal entry that I did, you know, in 2018. And we had, it covered one of these conversations that I was talking about. And I was like, honey, everything's going to be okay. And then I went downstairs and I cried. And ah, such a good testimony because I wrote, Lord, should I go out and get a job? Because that's what a man does, right? You provide for your family. But I'm in ministry? And I'm not going to pray into the people to sow. That's the, the work of the Lord. I just got to do what I'm called to do. Should I get a job? And I heard the Lord say just very powerfully, very still, no, I will provide for you. 
And I literally wrote, I was like, well, what do I tell her? And he just said, pray into her. And I, went, I realized, whoa, and this is one of the words that completely changed my life. My wife hears from the Holy Spirit. She hears from the Lord. And as I begin to pray, Lord, with that what you're sharing with me, that you'll share with her. And God's been providing faithfully for us. And, but I know there's going to be more. Not for me, but for the glory of God and for the benefit of other people. And so we continue to sow. We continue to sow physical, spiritual uh, words, prayers into all of you, in, into our lives, into our children. There's constant things that we have to stand against, but we're getting more versed in using faith and just, and just praying. We're, we're susceptible to fear and pressures just like everybody else. We're getting more disciplined and being able to stand on God's word. But what I, the reason I'm sharing all this is this is my passion in life, to share and to teach what you do in moments that you didn't plan for and to share with you that God loves you when you do wrong. He still is going to accept you, but he wants to show you right and he wants to increase you. He wants to show you to live by faith. The message and the evidence in this world are contrary to that which faith can manifest and change those things around. That's what it's for. And it's a fun life. It's a challenging life, but it's fun. But I also remember, you know, John B.C. before Christ. That was tormenting. Challenges were still there, but I was just tormented. Didn't know who I was. It was just like, so... Yes, sign me up. I'll keep going the way that I'm going because that was, was hopeless. And I see that all the time. I promise you tonight when I go to that celebration of life, there's going to be somebody there that's going to be crazy encouraged and they'll thank me. And there's going to be somebody else that's just distraught. It's like, sign me up for that. <laughs> sign me up for it. This is what I'm passionate about. I give people hope. And I can't... <laughs> If I won the lottery, what, what good would that? Well, easy for you, Pastor, right? I want my life to point to God. And I'm still learning, and sometimes I want more, but I know I'm in a position where what I want, it's not that God's not giving it to me. It's just that he knows exactly what I need, so I'm just going to keep staying the course and pressing in. And he's, he's, he'll, he'll do that for anybody. So praise the Lord. I am... Um, We'll just uh, finish with sewing. <laughs> sewing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Father, we take you at your word. We know that when we sow by faith, that it comes with the most powerful and divine promise. Father, that you work on our behalf, that you rebuke the devourer for our sake. We thank you, Lord, that as we sow this in faith, that the fruit of your promise is manifest in our lives. With a joyful and glad heart, we do this. We thank you for who you are, but more importantly, by your power of what we can do to bring you glory in this life. And Father, I say a special prayer to right now for the people that are preparing for that celebration of life. I pray peace into them right now. I speak against the spirit of fear and loss. 
and sorrow and deep grief. Father, I yield myself to you that as I go tonight, that you just fill me with the Spirit, that the words that I share are guided and counseled by the Holy Spirit, that they might bring life and hope and joy. Father, we pray these things in your precious Son's name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I believe uh, next Sunday, um, I won't be here, uh, but there will be somebody. So some of you are going, oh, sweet, we'll watch YouTube. No, come on, you can come. Uh, there'll be somebody here to speak the, the word. I, I've got a couple people that I know um, that, that may be willing, but um, I pray that, uh, that when you come that you're filled with somebody else that is walking their walk and hear from them. And there's an impartation from what they have to share about how they're walking uh, this walk. And then for me, know that I will be in the big hole valley in Montana looking at the big sky, just resting and getting restored in, in uh, God's creation. I love you and may you have a blessed day.